Welcome back. I'm Walter Reed, and today we're going to use some of what we've already learned to make a jetpack. We'll be using our move-in script from an earlier lesson, so check out that video to grab the source code. The source for this lesson will be in the description below. We'll need to make some small modifications to our movement script, but instead of adding more to it, let's begin by adding a new C-sharp script called Jetpack, where we'll do the majority of our work. First up, in the player movement script, we'll be adding one new public variable called has jumped this frame and setting it to false initially. We'll be referencing this variable within our jetpack script. It will remain false until the player has pressed the jump key. At that time, we'll be setting it to true. With our changes made, let's jump into the jetpack code. We'll be dealing with 11 member variables at this time, eight public and three private. Don't be intimidated since many of these are meant to be adjustable to the gameplay style. The first one is a Boolean value called can use jetpack. This will be the main variable in determining whether a jetpack can be used. Jetpack acceleration focuses on the strength with which the jetpack pushes the player up. Jetpack downward velocity canceling factor is a ranged variable between 0 and 1 and will affect how much using the jetpack will cancel the gravity value to start going up faster. 0 is not at all and 1 is instant. Consume duration is the time it takes to consume all the jetpack fuel. The refill duration grounded is the time it takes to completely refill the jetpack while on the ground, whereas refill duration the air is the time it takes to completely refill the jetpack while in the air. Refill delay is the delay after last use before starting the refill process. Current fill ratio is the stored ratio for the jetpack resource. One is full, zero is empty. We do also have some private variables as well. Last time of use, player character controller, and our trail renderer for the jetpack effect. We're doing some basic house cleaning in our start method. We're getting the character controller. We're setting our current fill ratio to one and we're setting to false the trail render or emitter. In the update method, the script has a few conditions for when the jetpack can be used. When a player is on the ground, the jetpack can't be used. However, when the player is in the air and presses the spacebar, the jetpack can be used as long as there's some fuel left in the jetpack. Once the jetpack is used, three things happen. First, the game tracks the last time the jetpack was used. Second, the game increases the player's velocity upwards while taking into account any gravitational force that the player is facing. 
as well as any downward velocity. Finally, the jetpack uses up its current uh, fuel based on how much of it has been used and for how long it's been used. Unfortunately, the jetpack doesn't last forever. Once the player is done using the jetpack, the game will wait for the certain delay before triggering the refill process. This refill process is determined by the refill rate, which is different depending on if the player is on the ground or in the air. Feel free to play around with the refill rate. You can make the refill rate for when the player is on the ground slower or faster than when they are in the air. And that's all there is to the jetpack script. With this you can add a jetpack to your project and customize it with adjustable parameters. As with any script, we've made a few mistakes. We'll correct them now. But don't worry, the source code at the end of the description of this video will be the final version. With the scripts all wrapped up, we are back in the Unity IDE. We just have two things we need to do. First, we need to attach our jetpack script to our player object. Second, we need to drag the trail renderer component to our TR field so we can see that effect. Let's hit play and see what it looks like. This was a real fun one. As always, I hope you found this useful and you can find the source code at the bottom of this video in the description. If you did, please consider telling me in the comments and like and subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Have a great day and keep playing.